In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. The last practice. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Praying psalms and verses. The most beautiful way to read the gospel is when we read a passage, we speak with God about it. This is the way the church reads the gospel. I'll give you two examples. In the Agbeya, in the midnight hour, the gospel is from John chapter 7 about the sinner woman. What do we say? Give me, O Lord, many tears as you gave the sinner woman. See what we did? We read the passage and story and prayed, saying, How come she could wash your feet with, t- with her tears, and that pleased you? How about me? Give me as you gave her. Is the connection clear? I pray with the gospel's words. Each passage or story you read, put yourself in it. Involve yourself. Put yourself in their shoes. I want that too. I'm like those people. Do that to me. Do that with me. I do not understand this. Promise me as you promised him. So you speak with God using God's words. And the easiest thing to do is praying psalms because you speak with God by the Holy Spirit's words that he wrote in the psalms. Of course, if we memorize a lot of these psalms and verses, it will make a big difference. Why? I will say this generation, we got old and memorizing became hard. I speak about the old folks, but the upcoming youth, there are people, not us, finishing big, thick books. But regarding the book of Psalms, do we leave our children who are emerging into the world without making them memorizing these Psalms? Elementary and middle school children, how? We should work on this until they memorize them. Work on them to memorize them and give them rewards until they memorize the largest possible number of Psalms. So that when they are our age and the brain slows down, and while they are driving their cars or standing in the kitchen or in the line to buy bread, they say Psalms. So they won't need to open the Agbeya or the Bible. Why don't we memorize them? Whoever wants to pray always and not get faint has to memorize. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth what is good. Every educated writer produces from his treasure, new and old. We want to memorize according to our ability and encourage our children to memorize more than us. Remember the word to your servant upon which you have caused me to hope. This is my comfort in my affliction, for your word has given me life. The value of praying with the gospel's words is that it gives the soul life. When you say this sentence to God, when you say, You, O Lord, said, this sentence, You, O Lord, said, brings joy to you when you say it to him. He says, Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Let's review the eight practices now by which we learn to pray without ceasing. The first practice, the beginning and the end of the day. The second practice, get a grip on your body, fast from eating and sleeping. The third practice, bridle your thoughts and senses. Fourth, get used to throwing prayers to God like arrows and do not stop throwing arrows. After that, put the name of Jesus in each prayer and be persistent and keep repeating. After that, say, thank you, God, as much as you are able to, with each breath if you could. Hold your tongue a lot so that you can speak with God more. I didn't put this with the senses because it has its own special value. And finally, speak with God using God's words. And glory be to God forever. Amen.